so I am now back on the USPTO website, USPTO.gov slash trademark. I'm on the trademark page and I want to walk you through actually applying for a trademark. Now I am going to want to log in here. Um, if you don't already have an account, then it'll take you to a screen probably that asks you to set one up. And if it does not, you can go to uh, this first timer button, which will you know go through some of your uh, money and legal rights. If that's something that you want to read, I actually highly recommend you do for first timers. I'll just click this. Um, it tells you what you need to know before filing. It's a lot of really helpful information. Um, again, read through this, what every small business should know now, not later, but I am going to, you know, walk you through this a little bit so you have an understanding of what you're doing. Once you actually have your account set up, you'll be able to go to the TEAS forms. And you are going to want to go to the initial application form and click TEAS plus slash TEAS standard application. Now, again, um, there is a difference between the, you know, plus TEA, TEA plus, TEAS plus, and TEAS standard. TEAS plus is actually cheaper. Um, the standard version is a little bit more complex. You're actually going to have to put in or write in specifically the goods or services that you're trying to offer. Most of you will not need to do that. Again, it costs more money. Um, you're probably going to want to go into this TEAS plus section. When it asks you if an attorney is filing the application, if you are not an attorney, the answer is no, I am an attorney. Um, so, you know, that is a button where I would click yes. Again, they will take you to the Trademark Basics webpage. If you click here, they advise you to read through this, as do I. You definitely want to make sure you have an idea of what you're doing before you actually file your mark. Now, you could potentially be um, uploading a saved form file if you've started this process before. Most of you will not have anything to upload here. Again, it says optional, so, so feel free to hit continue. So then you get to this actual application. Um, and you are going to want to put in uh, the owner of the mark. If it's an individual, it tells you the format to use, last name, first name, initial or name, if applicable, um, or middle initial or name. If it is a business, you're going to want to do uh, type in the business name here. Now, we have not yet talked about filing uh, a business. It is obviously possible if you already have a business entity to file the trademark for your business. But um, I wanted to talk about uh, trademark first just because the name of the business is something where people like to start and you don't actually have to have a company formed yet to go ahead and file that trademark. So if you want to go ahead and file the trademark and you don't actually have your business name yet, that's fine. If you do, and again, we'll talk about formation later, you can click the different types of businesses um, here. But for now, we're going to click individual. So I am going to just write a random name. I will write Kiki Lulu. It's what my auntie used to call me when I was little. Um, you're probably not gonna wanna need to click these DB unless you have a registered DPA um, or a TA name. If you, know, if you go by something else, an AKA also known as, um, that's something that you would put here. But for most people, this is not something you'll have to fill out initially. Um, again, we are registering as an, an, an individual. You're going to want to put your mailing address. So this could either be your specific address or it's going to be an address where you are actually, your business is going to be located. Um, city and state, country, zip code, all of that is uh, pretty, you know, standard. You're probably not going to have to um, uncheck this box unless your address is not the same as the application owner. Granted, if you are filing for the, yourself, you are the application owner, you don't have to worry about that. Phone number is not necessary, but you do have to put in a um, fax number and an email address and website address as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with um, some of my information uh, just so that I can get to the next page and I will come back shortly. So I filled in my information and it took me to this form uh, to get my mark on the principal register.
Now, if you are just registering the name of your mark, um, you are just going to be able to use the standard characters form. You're not claiming a particular font style, size, and or color. If you have like a specific logo written combined with the design, again, that is also something that you can trademark and probably will want to at some point, but it's not necessary to start out with. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and file standard characters, which really just means you're trademarking the name itself. So we want to trademark the name Fluffy Pillow. And then we're going to click here down at the bottom to see additional statements that we can make at our election. Um, if you have different things you want to include about the mark, um, you know, if there are, you know, prior registrants um, or if somebody is, you know, you know, actually giving you a mark, um, if there is a different translation of the mark, uh, meaning or significance of a word, indicate the nature of the claim um, of acquired distinctiveness, you know, these are not things that you're not necessarily probably going to have to worry about again at the beginning. Um, so this is probably not anything that you want to click immediately. But if there are other things about the mark that you need to include for whatever reason, that is how you get to that page. If not, we can unclick that box and continue. All right, so now we are registering for a good or a service. So we don't have anything added here. We're actually going to want to add a good or service. So here we are going to want to actually look for the thing that we are trying to register and figure out which class it belongs in. So as I mentioned, um, we wanted to trademark fluffy pillow as a lamp. Now, you, there are all these different types of lamps listed, and it actually tells you which class it belongs in. Remember, we discussed the different types of classes that trademarks belong in. Um, I actually have pulled up on another website, LegalZoom uh, page about uh, trademarks. It's a trademark glossary. If you search, Google search LegalZoom trademark class, this page should actually be uh, the first thing that pops up. And it actually gives you a definition of each class and tells you what's included in each class. Um, so that is awesome. You can see right here, class 11, it says apparatus for lighting. So it's not surprising that lamp bulbs, lamp shades, lamp bases, lamp chimneys, all of that are um, going to be included, it says right here in class 11. So you would want to go through this list and actually click um, what type of lamp it is that you want to include for yourself. So let's say here we actually want to include the lamp shades, the lamp bases, chimneys, wicks, globes. Keep in mind, um, if you include too many things, it can actually be harder to potentially separate your mark from other marks. Uh, so sometimes it's good to only choose a few. It's a lot easier to get something trademarked if you're only choosing a few different categories. If you're choosing lots of categories, they're, you're just, you know, widening the pool from which the trademark office will look to see if there are similar marks in that particular area. But we're only, oh, I didn't mean to click Wix, actually, because we only want to stick with uh, class 11. Again, you're going to be paying $225 per class. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for you, coming back to this class list, to look at the class list and decide, you know, what class you want to be in and make sure that you're only choosing marks uh, that are in that class so that you are, why not, let's click lamp bulbs, so that you are not having to pay for lots of different classes. Once you click or have found, you know, the basics of the products you were looking for, you can insert the checked entries into your account. And then once we have our goods and services, we can continue. Oh, sorry. I s and then once we have our goods and services, we can actually um, look at this bottom part 
uh, which is going to be really important important for most of you it's not going to be either section 44d or 44e it's either going to be section 1a or section 1b and we discussed in the last video section 1a means you're actually using the mark in commerce now meaning it's actually being sold and you're going to have to provide proof of this um, and you can see here there's a registration subject to cancellation for fraudulent statements so this is not a space where you want to lie um, if you are actually using the mark 1a is the, the mark to click if you're not using the mark yet but you intend to use the mark totally okay as I mentioned you can still follow your trademark it may not make sense to do that yet if you're uh, far away from actually using the mark because you only have a specified amount of time for that mark to um, you know to start using that mark otherwise you're going to want to have to file an extension uh, but for now we are going to click actually using the mark in commerce so this is the section where um, you're actually going to want to um, you know insert the specimen or the proof that you are actually using the the mark if you don't have the proof that you're using the mark you're not going to be able to use the mark in commerce so what exactly is a specimen you can submit like a tag um, or anything that is actually showing that the mark is actually being sold or used and I will also make sure um, that I include a list of or a, a link where you can go and see what qualifies as a specimen if we click here We have this awesome page on the USPTO about what a specimen is um, as I mentioned it talks about um, Making sure that the mark is actually being used in commerce. It's a real-life evidence um, they give you lots of different examples and requirements for you know showcasing a specimen examples of acceptable specimens the goods themselves showed a photo uh, of excuse me a photo showing your trademark on the bottom of a coffee mug or on the cover of a software instruction manual uh, labels and tags for the goods as i mentioned packaging for the goods sale displays and you can look up pictures for all of these things so you know exactly what these specimens should look like the uspto website actually does a great job of walking you through exactly what you need. Um, so you would want to attach your specimen here, um, the date of the first use in mark anywhere, um, and the date of the first use of the mark in commerce. So again, you might be using your mark, for example, on a website or on Instagram, or you know, you might have that TM next to it, and you might be using it in a space where you're not actually selling a product or good here. So that's what they wanna know when they ask for where you use the mark anywhere. And then they're also going to want to know where you were first using the mark in commerce. And um, uploaded a, you know, just picture for the sake of this uh, process as a specimen and um, filled in my personal information and clicked next. And I was taken to the trademark service uh, mark application page. Um, this page right here, so the page before this again, you're going to have to enter your personal email address after you upload your specimen, and then you'll come here. As I mentioned, remember we clicked lots of different types of lamps, but because all of those lamps were all in class 11, it was all in one class, we're only filing, paying for the filing of one fee, class 11. It'll then ask you to come down here and you know make a declaration acknowledge the statements that you've read them by checking the box you're actually going to want to read these statements you definitely don't want to just sign them or check them um, sign your name um, signatory's name uh, again you can add your position are you a company owner um, are you, you know, the, the mark holder? Are you a business entity? So make sure you say exactly what your position is. It's not necessary for you to include your phone number and you're going to want to enter the date here. Um, once you add that, you can validate what you filled out and you are on your way. And you have uh, actually put your first mark up on for consideration on the, for the principal registry. You will then get an email that details, you know, next steps. And I want to also make sure I am uh, 
you know, managing your expectations. It can take a while for the USPTO office to get back to you, and they will get back to you with whether or not your mark has been accepted. If not, it will tell you exactly why it was not accepted, and it'll either give you an opportunity to respond, um, or it'll allow you to go in and, you know, refile your application. But hopefully things go well the first time, and you won't have to do that. So congratulations, you have registered your first trademark.